Boys Midnight. I'm Diana Genta, taking another look at old school cult film classics. Last time we looked at Plan 9 from Outer Space, and coincidentally enough, next on my chronology is another zombie movie that doesn't actually use the word, filmed in black and white, on a low budget with lots of continuity errors. But there, the resemblance ends. Instead of the 1950s cocktail party sensibilities and unscary, quote, ghouls of Plan 9, we have the racially motivated 1960s mod generational gap sensibilities and quite distinct grew of a film that almost single-handedly defines the zombie movie genre. Now, unlike the previous two films I've reviewed, I did watch this movie back in college. Night of the Living Dead is one of those, oh my god, can you handle watching that test of your cinematic hard assery? We hadn't really heard of Zombie 2 in the backwater of Memphis then. Now, I have to be uncool but honest and admit that I really did find Night of the Living Dead hard to watch. And that was just Super 8 projected onto a sheet on the back of someone's closet door. I'm really interested in seeing how it holds up. Its racial and generational tensions have earned this movie quite a rep for genius, even though the filmmakers claim that no such symbolism was intended. This movie has to be taken seriously, and it earns it. So we are fortunate to have lots of continuity errors to amuse us. And cannibalism! Yay! With 30-ish sequels, backslash related films, backslash parody films to its credit, this movie almost doesn't even count as cult anymore. It is basically a franchise. So let's go backward through the mists of time back when this movie lived on the edge, to the tumultuous and groovy late 1960s, and play in the zombie wonderland that is Night of the Living Dead. Come on, let's go. Brad and Janet, I mean, Barbara and Johnny, bickering in the car as only siblings can do, on their way to visit the grave of well, their dad or somebody else not really important. Look at this thing. We still remember. I don't. You know, I don't even remember what the man looks like. Yeah, stick around a bit. You might. Yeah, a little spit and polish. You can clean this up. Shiny, spit-covered styrofoam. Ah, uh, family traditions. Eventually, they reach their destination, and Johnny, noticing that Barbara is scared of cemeteries, does his brotherly duty. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it! You're ignorant! They're coming for you, Barbara. And they really are. Look out, it's Riff Raff! Run, or you end up in Rocky Horror! Fighting off what at this point seems just like a creepy old guy, Johnny falls and hits his head, and Barbara flees. What, she hasn't helplessly tripped yet? I don't... Oh, there she is. She tries to drive away, but she can only coast because <laughs> the keys are in Johnny's pocket. Thanks for ruining it, Morgan! Then having crashed the car, she finds a nearby empty farmhouse, like you do. Look, you promised me Night of the Living Dead. I want to see some fucking night. Thank you. So Barbara wanders around the house, holding on to her last scrap of sanity, right? Checking the phone, looking for useful stuff, going upstairs to see... Ah! Fuck sanity! Run away, Barbara! Run! Go! Find Johnny! He's with the zombies! No, wait. What you need is a... Hero protagonist. Don't worry about him. I can handle him. He quickly checks the house for resources, none of which clearly are... Barbara. This is her healthy. Now, Act 1 establishes a few things about zombies. First off, man, you feed one and a whole flock of them shows up. Second, they are slow and stupid, and apparently remain perfectly still unless the doors open. Third, they light up faster than a pinto filled with airplane fuel soaked flash paper back into a nitroglycerin factory. After fighting off more zombies, Ben tells Barbara to wake up and fucking help by finding some wood board up the windows and shit. We find wood. <sighs> yeah, yeah, Barbara. Ben already took care of business. So now we have time for the obligatory background story share. And fortunately, we get some decent acting in here. This thing is just backing away from us. I looked back at the diner to see if, if there was anyone there who could help me. That's when I noticed that 
The entire place had been encircled. There wasn't a sign of light left, except... And then this man started walking up the road. He came slowly, and Johnny kept teasing me and saying, he's coming to get you, Barbara. And I laughed at him and said, Johnny, stop it. And then Johnny ran away. Oh, no, man. She listened to your touching fucking exposition. Now you listen to hers. Sadly, Barbara ain't here in reality with the rest of us. We've got... We have to wait for Johnny. And seriously, with that window right behind her, didn't you expect a zombie to come reaching through and just snatch her ass out? Anyway... He grabbed me! And he ripped at me! He held me and he ripped at my clothes! I think you should just calm down. Look, Ben. I'm way over here. Could you help her out with some Reiki or some uh, compassionate listening or... Whoa! We had a white woman right in the 1960s. Bold move, man. Bold. She's not going to dig you now, seriously. I think you're going to need a little more than mood music. Ah, good move. And I'll help protect you in case Santa joins the living dead. Better go find more ways to sweeten a chick up after smacking around like that. Yeah, chicks dig shoes. And if that doesn't work, it'll also be useful against any undead that try to invade your love nest. I found a gun and some bullets out there. It was only late yesterday. Or in these. Some choice. Those shoes are ugly. Kind of national emergency. When first reports began filtering in. You know what? Forget her, dude. She's nuts anyway. Are you done nailing stuff? I mean, done with security measures. We ought to be all right here for a while. Dramatically, it was soon apparent that we have a gun and bullets, food and the radio. This place is boarded up pretty solid now. Except for that one. It's like here. It's right behind. Uh, never mind. Hey, how about some radio? See if there's any news about the attacks. Consistent reports from witnesses to the effect that people who acted as though they were in a kind of trance were killing and eating their victims. The killers are eating the flesh of the people they murdered. And that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers. Medical examination of victims' bodies shows conclusively that the killers are eating the flesh of the people they kill. You know, what I wish they'd clear up is, are the victims being eaten at all? And by who? Because some cannibalism would make this movie a whole lot more entertaining. Ben goes to investigate for himself. Yeah, yeah, we know. Can you just... Thanks. Hey, maybe some new characters would spice things up. Wave of ah! 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 Yay, new characters, and they're going to become the best of friends and beat the monsters together. Well, you guys been down there. I could use some help up here. How are we supposed to know what was going on? Could have been those things for all we knew. Yeah, you could hear hammering. What did you think, the fucking zombies are having woodworking shop up there? Like, a bunch of carpenters rose from the grave, right? Milled around looking for their friends to have some sort of party and sort of some ridiculous... Alright, cannibalistic undead carpenters. But there's no time for arguing because the zombies try to break in. Okay, there's... Lots of time for arguing, I guess. Ah, right, yes, the zombies try to break in. Ugh, that's one way to keep them from pulling the boards off. Hardcore, Tom. Clearly the zombies can take some punishment. And they can take it with beautiful cinematography. but on the other, the zombie fetish is born. Thanks, George. Thanks a lot. It is tough for the kid that old man is so stupid. Now, get the hell down in the cellar. You can be the boss down there. I'm boss up here. Henry decides he's not taking Ben's shit. 
So he goes back down to the basement where he can whine to his wife. Well, we're safe now. It's boarded up tight. Radio upstairs. I heard a news board. There's a radio upstairs and you boarded us in down here? Radio? They have radio up there and we're down here? You dumb shit! Why did I fuck you that... once? It's a joke. Mr. Cooper, Ben found a television set upstairs. Let's go up. Jersey Shore is on. Pretty much everyone watches the TV news flash. Is being committed by creatures who feast upon the flesh of their victims. This is really not the place for an acid trip. Set and setting are way wrong. They had acid up here and he boarded us up down there? Whoa, have you ever really looked at doily? It's like a mandala. Still unsure of the attacker's diet. Who feast upon the flesh of their victims. They do hear about rescue centers along with other important information. Why are space experts being consulted about an earthbound emergency? It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. Ah oh, yes, Plan 9 deals with the resurrection of the dead. Do you have any answers at this time? The bodies must be carried to the street and, and, and burned. Uh, they must be burned immediately. Soak them with gasoline and burn them. They're just dead. They're just dead flesh anyway. Burn them the fuck up. Let's go. Chop, chop. Wait until I make a plan. Are the words, I have a cunning plan, marching with <laughs> ill-deserved confidence in the direction of this conversation? No. Ben and Tom make a plan to get Ben's truck to the gas pump in the farmyard so they can fill it up and get everyone to a rescue center. Tom does all kind of tricky things like how to drive a car and how to put gas in it. So he's put in charge of making the run through the zombies while Ben provides cover fire. And this actually allows for a, a really nice touching scene between Tom and his girlfriend Judy, who's watching Henry and Helen's injured child in the basement. You always have a smile for me. How can you smile like that all the time? I just don't want you to go out there, that's all. Hey, Smiley. Where's that big smile for me? Ben scares off the zombies at ground level while Henry drops Molotov cocktails on them from above. Judy suddenly runs out to be with Tom, almost fucking the plan, but they make it anyway. The mix of daytime and night is confusing. It apparently confuses Tom, too, who gets spooked and sprays the truck with gasoline. I thought we sent the guy who knew what he was doing. They try to bullshit their way through the rest of the plan, but surprise! Ben manages to fight his way past the ghouls, only to find that Henry has locked him out. It's ass kicking her lollipops, whitey asshole. And fuck lollipops. I'd have dragged you out there in these little things. But then they remember the zombie threat thing and look out the window. Bad idea. I was originally writing the script and editing video right before bed, and when I got to this point, I had to stop, and I had to, uh, to wait and edit this in the morning, because it's, it's just too much right before bed. I know, I'm a wuss, I don't care. Tom and Judy are now a festive cookout. Louie's not boring anymore, but now I'm hungry. When faced with horrors like cannibalism of one's friends by the undead, what do good Americans do? Turn on the TV! If you had a gun, shoot him in the head. That's a sure way to kill him. If you don't get yourself a club or a torch, beat him or burn him. They go up pretty easy. Are they slow moving, Chief? Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. But now the power goes out and the zombies attack in earnest. Shit going to hell fast. Ben drops the gun to hold the boards over a window and Henry grabs it. 
Because it's better to die in a zombie face-off in charge than to live being ordered around, right, schmuck? Then wrestles it back and shoots Henry in the stomach, who stumbles down the stairs to safety? Helen struggles against the ghouls breaking in. Barbara finally does something useful, but Helen flees to join her husband and gravely ill yet <sighs> forgotten child in the basement. And walks into perhaps the most disturbing scene in the movie. Maybe not, you know, Grave of the Fireflies disturbing, but still pretty messed up. That happens. Let's, let's, let's check it upstairs. No. Hey, Johnny made it over after all. No. 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 Bye, Barbara. You kids have fun. <sighs> As last ditch holdout. Ben retreats to the basement, now full of zombies. Guess he's boss down there, too. Somehow, Ben makes it through the night. The zombies overran the house, but the basement door held firm. So I guess, in a way, asshole Henry was right. He's awoken in the morning of a fresh new day by the sounds of birds and the rescue team shooting undead as they approach the house, looking for survivors. Ben goes carefully up, finds the house empty, and approaches the window. He is spotted by the police and taken to a rescue center. Good shot. I did mention this was the 1960s, right? Like, the white cop shooting the uppity but innocent black man who was pointing a gun out the window was entirely coincidental. Because, like, you know, zombies have guns. I mean, it wasn't a comment on the racial inequality for which our country was notorious at the time at all. Romero said so. And then behind the credits, grainy photos of Ben getting piled up with all the zombies and getting burned. Oh, yeah. It's harsh. I just can't. So first off, kudos for subverting the happy Hollywood ending. The film is high on tension and horror without depending on the gross out. This is partly due to the black and white film stock. It was chosen for budget reasons, but gave the film a matter-of-fact documentary atmosphere and allowed for some dramatic lighting shots. So nice performances also contributed to the film's quality. Barbara and Ben were originally written as quite different characters, but the filmmakers rewrote the parts when they found performances they liked. Barbara in particular is often panned by viewers as being annoyed and helpless, which is so, but let's think this through. What's more scary, being trapped in a house surrounded by zombies with a tough, capable partner at your side? Or this? Yeah. When you compare Night of the Living Dead to Plan 9 from Outer Space, you really see the difference between competent filmmaking with a low budget and incompetent filmmaking with a low budget. George Romero's best trick? He made the movie he could afford to make. There are no spaceships or airplane cockpits here. What he did make was not only the world's first zombie apocalypse movie, he also made the first How Not to Survive a Zombie Apocalypse movie. Now I know he didn't have decades of the genre he created to teach him, but the filmmakers seem otherwise intelligent, so I think this has got to be addressed. Their most egregious mistake? The cellar is the strongest place. The cellar is a death trap. Staying on the first floor and letting the enemies surround you, without at least going off and burning a few of them up every so often, is no different than being in the fucking basement. Isn't that right, Ben? As even any D&D &D player will tell you, you find a spot where you have a back door for escape, but the enemy has to come in one at a time, so you can just pick them off with ranged weapons and leave hand-to-hand -hand melee for any who squeeze by. In this situation, you could leave one door unbarred and shoot them in the head as they enter. Or even better, go up to the second floor, because zombies can't climb! Shoot them as they show up, or toss the Molotovs at them if you must, but eliminate them as they approach the house in twos and threes, rather than waiting to be swarmed. If the house is breached, get them one by one coming up the stairs. Or, you know, just chop the fucking stairs down to begin with. Once you're up there, you don't need them. 
If it turns out you want to leave, say, to go to a rescue point, you take that freebie corpse that fate gave you, toss it out the window, and the zombies crowd around it like some morbid Mardi Gras of the macabre, you escape out the other side of the building. They had a pretty goddamn sweet setup. Food, radio, TV, guns, flammables, zombie inaccessible areas with an escape route. How the hell did they manage to die? Though really you knew Ben was fucked from the beginning, right? But you were watching a Hollywood movie, so you got convinced otherwise until BLAM! Sucker. Thanks for hanging out with me in the back row. On the planner for next time, we have science fiction rock Barbarella, possibly the original source of scantily clad anime women. I'm Diana Genta. See you at midnight.